Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Our Two Cents. I'm Clinton Smith, the CEO of GCES, and I'm here today with Galen Bargerstock, our financial advisor at GCS. He's also our president and the founder of the company. Galen, how are you today? Good, Clint. How are you? I'm, I'm excited. This is our 10th episode now right. of Our Two Cents, and I don't think a lot of people understand that Our Two Cents is something we actually started years ago yeah. when we were doing Facebook Live videos. We were doing them every Tuesday at 2. You can check us out online if you want to check out those old videos. A lot of them are fun. Uh, about none of them are related to finance, but you get to know us and you get to see a little bit about the community that we live in and some of the things we do. Yeah, I think we went car shopping in one of them. Yeah, we did go. We went to. Uh, we actually went to a car dealership to do yeah. a video about how to save money when you're looking to purchase a car and things that you can do to lower those expenses. And I ended up driving home with a. New car. You did, yeah. Yeah. Worst <laughs> choice ever. It was not a great car. Uh, the Buick Cascada, which I think in Spanish means something that's not good uh, when it relates to a car. So it was a nice car. You're just a little bit too big for a small yeah. car like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Galen, I know that we've had so many questions that come up when people were preparing for retirement. And our original show, our Two Cents Live, we concentrated on three things that we talk about when we're meeting with federal employees or meeting with employees. And that would be health, wealth, and happiness. You know, we want to make sure that the things that we talk about are related around those things because that's really what it comes down to when you're talking about your life and retirement. For sure. Yeah. So let's start out with wealth related questions as it pertains to retirement. Okay. One of the first ones that we get a lot is what, sh what are emergency funds and what should I do as far as emergency funds go? I get asked that a ton of times. Like people ask me, how much money should I have on hand, um, you know, in case a furnace breaks or the roof is leaking. Um, there's no real set number. I mean, to each his own. Everybody understands their budget to themselves. You know, it's specific to them. But I would say, just in general rule of thumb, try to have about three, maybe six months of your bills, what you need monthly to survive, to help sustain if something were to happen. It's like an injury where you don't have. You know, disability insurance or something. And you really think this is just something they should have in retirement, or is this something people really should have before they get to that point? I'm pretty sure it's something that everybody should have at, at any given point of their lifetime. I mean, you never know the uncertainties of what life can bring you, so you should have a little bit of a nest egg set aside just for those what ifs. So, are there really any uh, ways that people can get emergency funds? If they don't have them, let's say someone doesn't have any emergency funds, is there some place that they can go? Well, no, because well, I mean, they, not like, friends. they have to create Not like Red wealth. Cross, I mean, yeah. like inside of them, like life insurance, or can they pull money from life insurance? In oh, the for sure. Yeah, point I mean, of an it, emergency? A, a lot of times people don't realize the cash value inside of a life insurance policy. That is kind of designed not just for, you know, building wealth inside of an insurance policy, but also those emergencies in case you would have something. So, yeah, you could access cash value of life insurance, um, you know, things like that early withdrawals or hardships on 401ks, things like that. I'd kind of steer clear from that if you can, but you know, pretty much it's just start when you're younger, start setting aside a little bit here and there and save it for a rainy day. Yeah, and I'm sure whenever you say, try to steer clear from that, you mean, unless it's your last resort. Because yeah. sometimes people, you know, we know it. sometimes people don't actually have a choice when it comes to making those decisions. And even sometimes people are forced into retirement not knowing anything, but then health issues happen and you have to do what you got to do. Correct. Yeah. I mean, when I say that, you know, last last minute hardship, you know, you could do a policy loan off of your investments, like the thrift savings plan for federal people, um, and where you're paying back the money. As long as you're putting in the matching money, I don't really have a problem with you borrowing money from yourself. It's when you're not putting in and you're not getting that matching money if you do the hardship. So that's the one I'd steer clear from. Okay. So I know another question that we get a lot is how is it, what's a good plan to pay off credit card debt? Should I pay off the higher balances first or the higher interest rates? What's the best plan of attack to help paying off debt when you're going into retirement? So, you know, debt is something that we're all going to build. Um, myself, personally, I, I love buying stuff. You know, I can't help it. Um, but, you know, you're buying these things and it's adding up. You need to really create a budget, see how much money you have and what you can actually throw towards these credit cards. You know, depending on the situation, it could be as severe as like five credit cards or even 10 or more. Um, but I usually say attack the one that you 
feel like you need to get away because you're the one that's in control of everything. Um, you could knock out the smaller ones and then attack the larger ones, but if that larger one's really bothering you, if it has the really high interest rate, tackle that one first. Yeah, it's always a good idea, I would think, to pay off the higher interest rates one with the higher balances first, yeah. just because you're gonna get higher charges with interest and a higher balance every month. So Correct. lowering that would probably be the first, start with those higher balance, highest interest rates, get rid of those ones first to save you a little bit of money and then just go down the list. You know, one of the things that I always tell people uh, even when we're talking about budgeting, is create some type of file, you know what I mean? Yeah. Some place that you're keeping track of what bills you pay every month. If you're computer savvy, open up an Excel file, you can do Google Docs or Google Sheets, something like that. I mean, my mother, I remember growing up, she had one of those notebooks, like the composite notebooks that are like black and white, look kind of like yeah. a fuzzy TV screen yeah. on the front. And she would write down every month where all of the money was going out, all of the checks that she was writing. Yeah. So that one, she could make sure that she was paying them. And two, she could see where the money was going every month. And it, at the very least, that's a really good way to start paying off debt and understanding where your money's going. Yeah. I mean, with that said, you know, that was, you know, their generation. Our generation is a little bit different. You know, a lot of people aren't balancing a checkbook because they're not even carrying a checkbook anymore. So it's yeah. a little bit harder and you have to be more vigilant about how you're tracking your money in this new modern time. Yeah. I, unfortunately, am too young to have remembered or have ever been taught how to write checks in high school, but Galen, you have done that, right? I've written a check or two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So I know we, we also get the question, you know, a lot of people were like, hey, should I pay off my car? Yeah. Should I pay off my house? Yeah. When you're sitting down with people, how do you help them decide what to do? Yeah, you know, it's a huge question I get all the time. You know, should I pay off my house? You know, you have to take into consideration so many things. And I will help you personally analyze the situation which you're in, should you pay that off or not. Nine times out of 10, no. I mean, if your interest rate is low and you were lucky enough to maybe refinance when rates were lower, um, you could make more interest off your investments, pull them out over time. There's so much to consider whether you're pulling money out of your investments or if you're letting them sit and grow. And if you're getting, say, an eight or a 9% return and you have a 2% on your mortgage, you know, just the simple math in your head is telling you that nine is greater than the two. So, you know, you're always gonna have some bills and when you purchase that home, you kind of knew you were going into a 20 or a 30 year term at that point. So just continue to follow your plan. You know, if there's like, 10 grand to pay off, you know, that's a different story, but you know, each case is specific. Yeah. So guys, we've always said this, we say it all the time. I just want to remind you, there's a number right here on the screen. Put it in your phone right now. It's 888-391-3465. And you can set up an appointment. You can literally do that right now while we're on break and we will be back with just a moment. And we're going to start going over different things about health related questions and how it pertains to retirement. So what got me into the business was really a series of events that led up to us uh, doing it together. Galen and I were together for 10 years probably before we started our company. Before that I was in restaurant management and hospitality and a lot of that is carried over into our business but I got laid off from a restaurant and he said, hey, do you want to start setting my appointments? And then we made a logo and now here we are 12 years later. So one of the things we've learned and noticed in this industry is that a lot of agents and companies just try to go in and sell everyone the same life insurance product. And that's something we really had to battle against in the beginning. We worked primarily in the beginning with postal employees and a lot of them were taken advantage of. All of them have the same product, life insurance product, whether or not it worked for them. And that's why I like what we do, because we're not just out there to sell a product, we're out there to make the right decisions for people and use products that are actually good for them. So it's not all about making a sale, it's more about finding the right piece to fit into the retirement puzzle. If you go to a big box company, you're gonna get a big box product. If you go to somebody independent, that independent person is able to search multiple companies to find the best thing that suits your needs for retirement. So I'm really excited about the way that the business is going now. You know, we've been in it for quite a few years and we're, we're excited to get to bring on more people into the family.
Everybody, welcome back to Our Two Cents. I'm Clinton Smith. I'm here with our president and founder and financial advisor, Galen Bargerstock, and we've been discussing health, wealth, and happiness as how it relates to retirement and questions that we come into. Yeah. So Galen, I know this, these are super easy questions for us to answer, but they're also things that a lot of people at home don't understand because they're not doing this every day. No, I, I think that we picked some questions for to address that are very common that people ask us a lot. Um, so these are kind of like the top picks of what we hear about these topics. Yeah, and if you were with us right before our break, I did mention that the thing here is, is that these are all questions that you should have answered on your own. You're not gonna pick out your retirement plan just from watching this show. You literally need to have a meeting with us. If you don't like us, call another financial advisor, but do yourself a favor, meet with the financial advisor, call the number on the screen. We'll come out and meet with you. Sit. We can meet in your house, you can come to our office. We even do Zoom meetings if you wanna do it online. So. Because all of these questions, they, they might be different. The answers might be different because of your specific situation. Yeah, for sure. You know, every family is different, right? Correct. We all have our own, we're like snowflakes out there. We all have our own fingerprints and fingerprints, snowflakes. Yeah. So health related questions. Yeah. I know we get a lot of questions about how do I make sure that I can maintain my health coverage in retirement? Yeah. So a, a lot of the times employer plans, when people are on a health plan with their employer, they have to be in a certain vesting period for them to port them over into retirement. Um, so depending on the situation of where you're employed at, you need to find out the rules about the health plan. Because what I've found over time is a lot of times, like a federal employee will be on their spouse's health plan because they have great health insurance through say the state. Um, but at retirement, it's actually flip-flopped and the federal plan is gonna give more benefits Fits for the family coverage um, for the retirement years. Um, federal rules are five-year vesting, so you have to be in that plan for five years, any plan, not a specific plan, but just in that bubble for five years, and then you can retire with it. So over the years, I've just seen so many people that didn't know this rule, and not just federal, but any kind of employer address it, figure out where you specifically sit, and you know, don't waste time, because I've seen people have to work five years longer than they have to just because of health insurance because they can't afford health insurance without the discount from the employer. So you'd say it's a good idea to meet with your, to really check in five plus years before you plan to retire on how to maintain health coverage in retirement, is that what you're saying? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, minimum five years, it could be longer, you know, depending on the employer, but you know, a lot of financial advisors aren't even gonna know this role or maybe go down this path with you, but it's something that I've just learned over the years to educate people on to find more about. Well, I'm sure it actually goes into you creating an entire plan for people. Correct. Making sure that they understand everything. Yeah. Whenever Galen or any of our advisors come out and sit down with you, we literally go through everything from soup to nuts, everything, will be covered and you'll get a complete picture of what your retirement is like. If you're meeting with someone and they are not doing that for you, they're doing you a disservice by not going through all of the things that you have coming to you. Yeah. So find a holistic uh, financial advisor that will help you encompass more of what your retirement is. Correct, yeah, I yeah. agree 100%. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I know Medicare, that yeah. comes into question a lot. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, I know the answer. Uh, let's see if you do. Okay. What age is Medicare available for you? So 65 is when a person is, is first eligible for Medicare. Um, everybody's gonna get Medicare Part A. You know, that's a given. Um, you don't have to do anything for that. Um, you might need to enroll with Social Security, but most people tell me it's automatic. It's Medicare Part B that's optional. And if you are working, you don't have to pick up Medicare Part B if you're still working because you're still on an employer sponsored plan. So why waste the money if you don't have to to continue the coverage with the employer until it's time? Yeah. yeah. And I know, I, and this was actually on our last question, yeah. health coverage and retirement, look at your spouse's coverage too. Correct, yeah. I mean, so many times I've seen it where it is cheaper while one spouse is younger and then retirement flip flops, it's completely different. You just wanna make sure that you are educated on what goes on based on where you guys work. And realistically, at this stage of your life, you're gonna be in your 50s or 60s. Um, you should have you know, pretty stable employment that you know if you're going to port that over to retirement or not. So this next question, kind of depressing, but mm -hmm. we're gonna do it anyways. Okay. So I know that we've had clients that have become terminally ill, that were diagnosed with a terminal illness, whether it be cancer or something else. In that situation, what can people do to get access to their funds? 
No. So, I mean, it, part of the job that when I signed up for this, I did not know that I was going to be doing this. Um, but uh, you, you can access your life insurance policies. You know, there's most companies have riders or exclusions, you know, annuities as well, that if you are terminally ill within a 12-month window, you are going to be able to access your funds. Maybe not all. They might give you 50% or 75% advancement. Um, but that gives you 12 months. And, you know, it's a bad situation that you're in, but this is like your last shebang. So, you know, go do what makes you happy um, and, you know, not really worry about the consequences yeah. at this point. Guys, we, we were so lucky that we got into this business. Uh, it was by happenstance. It was by a Craigslist ad, if you remember what Craigslist was. Uh, and we got into this not knowing that we would actually enjoy it. And... Honestly, the, I remember the first time that you got a call that one of our clients passed away. And these are clients that we've had for years. We've been into their homes. We've met with them. We know about their life. We know about their children. We know about their dogs. You've gotten salsa, maple syrup. I mean, anything you can think of, our clients have gone above and beyond in giving us things and taking care of us. And we really do the same thing for them. You know, we get invested in our relationships with clients. So for us to say, you know, we're able to talk about, you know, somebody being diagnosed as terminally ill. But when that happens, I know that it is not a good conversation and it is not a good day for us because we feel for you guys out there that are struggling, that have health issues. And we want to do the best thing that we can in helping people. Yeah. And I, do you remember the first time? I remember. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 No, I, I remember it. And, and I've said it before. It's not that I am heartless at this point. It is that I have become numb over the situation. Because the last thing that you need is if something this important in your life um, happens to you is somebody that's not stable. So, you know, I've just learned to be a rock and go through with it. I actually had a person pass away a couple days. It did affect me. Um, it wasn't just a, a normal client. It was, you know, kind of what I would consider family. Um, and it, it's hard. It's very hard to deal with. But at the end of the day, this kind of wraps into why do you need a financial advice? You know, you can do it yourself. Um, and maybe you understand how all of this works, but your spouse might be lost in the dark when all of this, you know, of what you're talking about with all these financial stuff. So if something happens to you, who do they go to? You know, so I just, you know, in time, I've liked to become that person for everybody. Um, I just, again, I didn't know I was going to be this person, but here we are. And, yeah. you know, it's important stuff. So guys, we are going to take a break in just a few seconds. Once we come back, we're going to talk about different questions about happiness. So we're going to get off of the terminally ill, depressing topics, and we're going to finish out this show talking about questions related to happiness as it pertains to retirement. In the meantime, if you want to, you can give a call to the number on the screen. You can schedule an appointment to meet with Galen or one of our advisors uh, literally before we come back. We'll see you in a few seconds. I got into the financial space <laughs> just answering a Craigslist ad, honestly. It kind of fell into my lap. I got out of the military. I went to college before, didn't know what I wanted to do. And it's just something that piqued my interest that, you know, once I learned about it, I wanted to know more. I think what makes me keep on doing this is the fact that everybody's different, every family I meet with. So it keeps it very interesting. So we, we started out as independent. Um, and then at one point, I wanted to know more because the clients kept on asking me questions, so I wanted to advance you know, my knowledge. So I did work for Prudential for about a year and a half, and then I came back. I, I decided that I wanted to be independent. Again, I can go outside the box and pick the proper product for the clients. I feel as an independent advisor, um, I have more ability to find different financial products that are available, not just in one box. I think that everybody's family, you know, all across America is completely different. No one family eats the same meal for dinner every single night. Uh, the recipes, even if they would, would be different, the ingredients. So it's just like that with the family situation. So while finance is pretty much standard and, you know, set by mathematics, the family aspect brings a lot of fun for me because it keeps it interesting.
Welcome back, everyone. This is another edition of our Two Cents Live, and we are gonna be wrapping up talking about some happiness-related questions as it pertains to retirement. Now, here's the thing. No one has ever asked us these questions, right? No one ever sits down and asks us questions about how to be happier. But at GCS, we believe that happiness goes right along in line in retirement with health and wealth, right? Health, wealth, and happiness, but no one ever asks questions about how to be happier in retirement. And we've seen some people retire that don't know what they're gonna do with their time. They don't know what they're gonna do to fill their days with. And they actually end up going back to work because they're bored, right? Yeah. I see it all the time. People, like you said, just out of boredom. Um, you've never retired before. You've never not worked. What are you going to do with all of your time? Um, it, it's you should probably have a game plan inside. Maybe get a hobby a couple years before retirement, so you're not caught off guard. Because you are going to have a lot of time on your hands, and you're going to have to figure out what to do to fill that. You know, and if you're lucky enough to have, you know, a big family, the family is going to fill your time, I'm sure. But even family, you know, they get busy as well. Yeah. So our number one thing on our list is finding something to fill your time with. You know, these are your years to enjoy your life, not to continue working. Uh, so a hobby would be a great option. You know, a lot of people plan on spending more time with their grandchildren uh, and with their family. And one of the things that we've actually seen is where that's taken advantage of. You know, <laughs> children have a tendency to suck the life out of your wallet, your time, your life. <laughs> and then you can do that to your, your grandparents, right? Yeah. Where they, they end up becoming that free in-home babysitting okay. service. Yeah, yeah, the babysitting, um, you know, I, I do see that. But, you know, a, a lot of times you think you might want to go out the gate, you know, babysitting all the time. Um, and then you're with your grandchildren and you love your grandchildren. I'm not going to say anything that you don't love them. But they're screaming, they're yelling, you know, it's a little bit different. The kids are, you know, acting different from the children that you raised, but they raised them. But you just, you know, you need to have something to do, you know. Yeah. A nice hobby, um, camping, fishing, you know, something that is, you know, cheap because you also don't want to spend all your retirement savings unless you're prepared for that to do a hobby. You know? So I think just be very clear in the beginning that you're not going to be the new for free babysitter. Yeah. You can do it when you want to and then go down that route. You know what I mean? Don't make a huge commitment that you don't want to get into. Uh, I know besides hobbies, uh, you know, spending time with your family. Another thing that a lot of people have done in retirement that we've talked to them about is volunteering with local organizations and charities. Yeah. I think uh, charity in general, you know, as a company, we give back as much as we can. Um, it's very important to give back to the community. So if you, if you aren't looking for income, but you are looking to help somebody in some way, there's so much you could do to impact from your community. Um, so many different organizations out there that not only you could donate your money to, but you could donate your time. A lot of these places would like to have your time more than money. I know personally, you know, um, you know, how, I don't even know how long it's been. Like 10 years ago, we drove for the Shriners and they were roadrunners. We picked up children and took them to the hospitals to have procedures done. And, you know, it was great, but we're driving like seven hours and we're working. And I realized when I did it, you know, this is something that I can come back to when I retire right now that I want to work. But I did like the aspect of helping the children and, and giving them a ride where they need. Yeah. And when we were in the Masons, I think we were the only ones under like the age of 70. We were. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, everyone that was there was definitely retired. You know, look into your local community, find out if there's opportunities for you to help out in your community and give back to the community if you have the time to do it. You know, your retirement is what you're going to make of it. Uh, your retirement isn't going to make itself. I do want to remind everyone that we will do a full financial analysis. All you have to do is call us and schedule an appointment. You can get a complimentary written financial plan where Galen will go over all of these questions with you specifically. You know, you don't have to watch this show to get all of your knowledge about retirement. That's a lot easier to do in a two hour meeting with Galen. And then we're going to be there for you for the rest of your life. You know, uh, we follow people into retirement. We work with them after retirement. We help them with Medicare and we work with everyone regardless of age. It doesn't matter if you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s or beyond. We can work with everyone. Yeah, we can work with everybody and, and the different stages of life. 
it keeps it fresh for me, you know. A 20 year old, his, I remember when I was 20, carefree, you know, you had so much going on and, and now you're retired and you, you built your wealth and you're looking back on everything. And that's where we can't give you happiness. You have to create your own happiness. We can give you the, the fundamentals of the financial aspect of it so you can not worry about that. You know, and if you eliminate a worry in your life, that might make you a little bit more happy somewhere else, yeah. you know. So, you know, it's just about giving back and, you know, thinking but you know at the end of the day most people tell me that they they love it you know yeah. they've never had the ability to have free time and at first it's like the first two or three weeks it's like you you're reaching for your alarm clock you don't know if you're gonna be late for work you have anxiety still because you're, you're still in that running 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 mode and it, it is time to just sit back and be happy and once that triggers in your head um, it'll come in time. Yeah, it's like vacation time. Whenever yeah. you like go somewhere <laughs> and it's a vacation touristy area and everything takes forever, and then you go to New York City and it's all super fast, super fast. Yeah, retirement's going to be a lot different. You did say something that I want to point out. You said uh, being happier somewhere else. Yeah. That someone might be happier somewhere else. I actually want to point out we have a client. I don't want to say her name, uh, his or her name, but we had a client recently pack up and move to Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they did, they, I won't, you know, say yeah. anything, but, you know, it, Hawaii would make me happy, you know, sun's always shining, it's a constant temperature, if that's your dream, that's your dream. Um, one thing that I've seen over the years, though, a lot of people, when you're, you're making those gut reactions, like, I'm going to sell my home, and I'm going to move to Florida, they're living in, you know, the northern states, you know, sick of winter and things like that, a, a handful of them have come back, you know, if your family and your roots are up here, you are going to miss them in time. I might recommend maybe taking an extended vacation for a while, you know, Airbnb nowadays, you know, not just hotel rooms, you can rent a house for a month or two, get your feet wet, and then kind of see where it goes from there. Yeah. A little bit less expensive. Yeah. No rash decisions in retirement, folks. We <laughs> want you to think things through. So, Galen, I know we've talked about health, wealth, and happiness. Uh, what do you think about us putting it all together and how this is something that we believe in for our clients? Yeah, I mean, everything is related to, of course, your health, you know, and the healthier you are as a human being, hopefully the longer that you are going to have as a lifespan. Um, the longer you have with a lifespan, hopefully you're going to have many more happy days than sad days, you know, so the happiness is involved inside of that. Um, and wealth, you know, just growing up and being in my 40s now, wealth comes in time. It is not something that is just going to instantly come for most people. It's a lot of hard work and earnings to create that wealth, and you just want to make sure you protect it. Guys, I want to thank everyone so much for joining us today while we talked about health, wealth, and happiness and how it relates to retirement. Again, we are here for you guys. If you want to have a full financial review, all you have to do is call the number on the screen and we're able to help. It literally will take you five minutes to book an appointment, two hours at most usually for the appointment to happen, and you'll understand everything that you need to know about your retirement. Call the number on the screen, 888-391-3465, and book your first appointment and start your journey towards retirement today because your retirement is not gonna plan itself, guys. It's time for you to take that first step. Give us a call today. Thank you so much, guys. See you soon.